So the question came up, um, are there any worksheets for chapter two? And the answer is not really. The thing about chapter two is that it shows up in other places. So when we do a table in chapter three, that's really chapter two. When we find midpoints in section three, three, that's really chapter two. When we figure out whether it's skewed left or skewed right, that's all chapter two stuff. So chapter two is more indirect. It's there when we do dot plots and stem and leaf plots and stuff. When we look at the data that's given to us in a histogram, that's all chapter two. But we don't really do direct worksheets on it. Um, we, everything's kind of indirect. You're given data a lot of times in histogram form or something like that. So the question has come up, um, what's the best way to study for exams? And that's a really good question to ask. And the answer is it varies on the person and their experience and background. Um, one of the first things I would suggest is start working on your note sheet because you get to use a single sheet of paper. Hold on, I will hold up a demonstration. Front and back. Yeah, isn't that lovely? So you get to use a sheet of paper like that, front and back on your note sheet, um, as your note sheet. As a matter of fact, I have one posted in the course materials on the page. So let me actually show you that real quick. And so what you want to do is you want to kind of keep track of what you need help with as you go, what things you struggle with. Um, say as you're doing your paper pencil packet, what are some things you had to refer back to in the notes? Um, things that as I talk over the notes when I lecture, things that I say, oh, that's going to be on the final. That might be something to highlight. Um, so um, maybe have highlighters, maybe make stars. A lot of students use those little like index tabs and they'll tab that page. Um, so on the info and links page, let me share my screen with you real quickly. One second. Uh, screen in. There we go. It's going to take it just a second to kind of link in. Okay, so over here on the info and links page, you can see through all of this. And I thought I had it in here. Mm, no, I don't, but I'm going to post it. Oh, I know where it is. It's on the worksheets page. But you know what? I'm going to post it in info and links too. I'll do it in both. Um, so I have it available in a different area, but I'm just going to put it right in here, right under exam um, links. I'm going to post it. So give me one second. But there will be, um, a, it's going to be an online um, exam note sheet. And so what I recommend is for students to kind of get used to that and also get used to um, having that. Oh, no, not that. Sorry, that was the wrong thing. Get used to having that. Um, Notes packet. There's a packet of notes. Oh, there it was. It was the template. There's a packet of notes in the um, back of the course pack, and that will be given to you on every single exam. So having that out and available to you is a great thing. Oh, there it is. See, it's just a blank sheet of paper, and I can give it to you guys in, in document form, so you could type in it if you want, or PDF form. And so what you're doing as you're going through the paper pencil packet, as you're going through the notes, you go, oh, that's important. Put it on this note sheet. Put it on this note sheet. And then maybe print off a couple copies of the note sheet and kind of clean it up before you go in to take the test. Um, but then you have it in one spot. And as long as you don't use this as scratch paper on the test, I actually scan this and send it back to you. My personal recommendation is you keep the original copy and you just take a copy in with you. Um, that way, if it gets lost, if something gets messed up, you still have the original. It's just my, my little recommendation. So that's one thing I would say. If you want to know what exams look like, the paper pencil packets are kind of what exams look like. Also, there are reviews in the back of the course pack. Those light yellow pages, those um, are full of old exam questions. So you could use those as also a study guide and go through those. And when you find, oh, I didn't know what this was, then write it down on your note sheet. And then that can be used for you. So does that make sense? So when you're doing your paper pencil packets, kind of keep track of what needs to go on that note sheet, and then go practice those exam reviews. I posted on them for you. Um, actually, there are sample exams available for you also. So under course materials, document sharing, I actually have posted sample exams. There are no answer keys to it. It's just for your own studying purposes. I call them the pre-do right here. So there's exam one's pre-do right there. So you could download that, print it off, and do it just for practice, just to kind of see if you really think you understand it. If not, then maybe do some more of that exam review in the back of the course pack. Go over like, oh, this is what I'm struggling with. So go find a question that's like what you're struggling with. 
and practice that some more. Does that make sense? So it's actually just a lot of time and effort and it's not all going to be in one shot. You're going to work on it little bits, little bits, little bits all the way through for the next couple of weeks. So you work on the sample exam. You work on your paper pencil packets. Paper pencil packets are first because they're worth a lot of points. And then you start working on the sample exam and actually the exam reviews. And the exam reviews actually have answers. They're in the back of the course pack. So there's like 33 pages for exam one as well as an answer key for it. So you work on that. And as you work, you write down on that note sheet things you need, calculator steps, definitions, what this example is, you know, put whatever we want on there. You just can't use it for scratch paper when you take the tests. And then it will be emailed back to you and you'll get to use it for the final. Because on the final exam, you get to use four sheets of paper. And so a lot of students use their exam note sheets from the first two exams and then make two more note sheets for the last few chapters and you get to use all of them on the final. Does that help? All right, so the question is, what chapters and sections does the first exam cover and what is the date of the exam? Good questions. Okay, so the date of the exam is available to you in the schedule. So when you look to your, um, so let me go to the main menu here in our course. There'll be um, the info and links and then right below that is the schedule. So if you click on the schedule, you can actually see um, the schedule for the course. And actually, I posted this as a PDF, so you can print it, which I would highly recommend. Um, I think you have to like open it in, or download it up here, download, um, and then you can print it, which is lovely. And you can see the midterm exam one is right here. Um, it's covering chapters two through four, along with sections one, one, and one, two. And you would study paper pencil packets one and two, also study the exam review and back of the course pack. So there's what sections it is. And also when it's due would be Tuesday, February 11th. It's actually um, already over there. I think I opened it up on 129, like Wednesday of this week, because I like to give people a couple weeks. That way, if they want to work ahead or whatever, they can do so. So it's actually currently available at 129. Now, I can't guarantee that, you know, for all semesters, but that's how it's working this semester. Um, and it's already over there and it's due to 11 and it would be over the chapters right here. So mostly three and four, to be honest. Chapter two kind of shows up on the side. Like we don't have any worksheets for chapter two directly, but every time you look at a histogram or a pie chart or whatever, it's all chapter two or dot plots. Those are chapter two. When you look at a table and find the relative frequency, the cumulative frequency, all that stuff, that's chapter two. Midpoints, that's chapter two. So they kind of hide in plain sight, chapter two stuff does. But it's really, to be real, mostly three and four with one and one and one two. One two actually has one of the most important concepts for this um, particular chapter, which is the whole placebo effect, correlation is not causation, lurking variables thing. That's in 1-2. It's also in 4-1. And then 1-1 has all your basic definitions you're going to have to know, like, you know, quantitative, um, discrete, quantitative, continuous, all that jazz. So those are all in there. Did that answer your question? So the question is, when and what notes pages are due for checking? Okay, so I will randomly post them. So they will go up onto a discussion board um, later on. Um, be real with you, it's about exam week. There you go. So during exam week, I'll kind of send out a, hey, you've been randomly selected for this page. And so you open up your um, notes to that page, you take a picture, and then you post it in that discussion board. So it happens a few times a semester. Um, it's just kind of a, hey, everybody remember you should be doing notes kind of a thing. It's, it's, um, that's all there is to it. I have had a few students at the first notes check are like, wait, there's a course pack? And I'm like, oh no, this is not going to go well for you. So yes, there's a course pack. Yes, you have to do it. Um, uh, it help, it will happen if you look at the schedule. It's going to happen right around the time of, um, each of the exams. So exam one, exam to exam three doesn't exist for you guys so it won't be the final it's usually like the week before the final or somewhere in there um but you have to show me your third note sheet i mean unless i try to do four this time but in general i just do three and then the students are all randomly selected so when i send out an email there'll be like a little link you can click on it and you can see what your note sheet was everybody had a different page of notes 
I try to make it so it's always something you have to write on. If it's not something you have to write on, then that's my bad, but um, you can email me and I'll give you one that you do have to write on. But I think I've weeded out all the non-writing ones lately. And actually, I didn't record the answer to these previous questions, but let me just real quickly say them. You know, where's the schedule? Where's the syllabus? How much is the final exam worth? All that stuff is available to you on your schedule, on the schedule link. I made a PDF. I would recommend you print it. Um, print it and use it. It's your it's your Bible. You kind of follow through week by week. What's coming due? What's due, et cetera? What are the due dates? It's all over here. And then on the info and links page, you can access the syllabus again if you forget. It actually has links to the syllabus videos again if you want to rewatch them for real good times and fall asleep to them. But the syllabus itself will be up here. Um, so you can click on that again and kind of go, wait, what was this percentage? What you'll find when you look at the syllabus is the paper and pencil packets are worth a ton. So you want to do them well because they're worth 30% of your grade. They're worth more than the final exam is. Um, so that's something to take note of. And um, I'm trying to think anything else, if you can't remember, um, it's all in here, as well as links to those videos again, in case you get lost or can't remember how to do a paper pencil packet. They're all in that online info and links page, all of it, as well as those exam note sheet templates. I posted them there, as well as posting them under course tools, document sharing. They're so much better than doing it yourselves, just because they've got that little box that kind of reminds you, hey, I've got to, um, well, I've got to look at these and put my name on it, put my section number on it, which you guys can just write online. It's fine. and kind of go from there. It's so much nicer um, for me and for you. you. It helps you keep track of like what exam I took this on, what exam I'm using this for, et cetera, et cetera. So super nice. And I highly recommend you print off, print off a few of them. Kind of have one as your kind of like working one you kind of mess with and then then make a nice clean one to take in to take the exams and actually don't take your original keep your original at home make a copy take that one and that way if it gets lost or destroyed or whatever you know testing lab doesn't generally mess up but just in case keep your own all right so for people who don't know what's the best way to ask you questions about material if we need further explanations and the answer is it depends so for my stat lab questions, I highly recommend you send them to me as my instructor because I have a ton of videos about the my stat lab questions up on my YouTube channel. And I, oh, you know what? I can get to it a different way. Yeah, it's all right. I'll just go to it this way. But um, under my 133 playlists, I have um, a my stat lab tutorials and I've actually posted answers to student questions there. So that might be a good way to go. It's right here under my stat lab tutorials. So that might be a way to check first because you never know. Some of the student, some other student might have already asked you that question or asked me that question. So that'd be one way to go just for my stat lab stuff. Check that first. Check this my stat lab tutorials playlist right here first. Kind of see if your question shows up in the list of questions that I've gotten. If it doesn't, then send it to me with Ask My Instructor. Um, and then I can kind of look at it. So that's one way. Um, for my um, paper pencil, it also kind of depends. If it's a quick question, probably just text it to me with Remind, and then I can get back to you. And so see, I have a whole bunch of tutorials here. If it's kind of more involved, then that's what Big Blue Button is for. Um, so you can text it to me, I can say, you know, that's good. Maybe we should ask that in Big Blue Button so everybody can hear the answer, or I can make a video of the answer, that kind of thing. Um, Usually I just send it out to text. I say, hey, everybody, this question was asked. Here's the answer. Actually, I'm limited in characters, so I can only send out like 140 characters. So that's why my texts are super short for announcements in that app. So I'll send it real quick. I'll be like, everybody, blah, 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 number, you know, paper, pencil, packet one, which I abbreviate to PPP one just to save myself characters. So say PPP one, number 15 this is what I mean, or something like that. So I'll send answers that way also, especially if I think it's confusing for everybody, I'll send it out that way. Um, other than that, of course, you can come in and ask me questions in my office hours. That's why I do Big Blue Button though. I figure most people can't drive in, so I'm trying to give you guys an opportunity to ask questions electronically. Um, but texting me with Remind is the other way. I, I'm way faster responding to Remind than I am to pretty much anything else. So that's another way. Um, coming in to talk to me face to face. And then also, don't forget, you don't have to just get answers from me. And I just sent this out today. So it's so good that you asked that. 
um, because in my announcements, I posted them. You can get these to these, um, let me just show you. When you're on your course home, the latest announcements are posted, but you can actually see all my old announcements in there. Sorry, this is the instructor home. I'd have to, all right, because I'm streaming this video is super slow. So give me a second here. All right, so if I go to the student home, which is what you guys see, you can see the announcements. There's my latest announcement right there. See, ways to get help. So there's, you can make the announcements go away. You can make them show up. You can see other announcements. So let me click on that. And there are the announcements right there. So there are, there's free tutoring on Central Campus. So you can get tutoring for free. And there's a little link in here. You can click on it. And it'll take you to the info for the Center for Student Success. I know, I know for a fact this semester, there's a tutor in there who's tutoring. He's a student for my face-to-face um, -face class. And he's there Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. His name is Alex. And I know there are other staff tutors as well. Him, I just know. I know he's there in the afternoons. Um, then he's also my supplemental instruction leader. You can actually go to supplemental instruction leader sessions. Um, basically, they're built-in tutors for a section of the course, but other students can show up for their sessions. And um, to, the link here can lead you to their session times. Um, so click on that. You can kind of find the su supplemental instruction. So basically built in student tutors, they're like student helpers for a class. Um, there are several for 133. Find a session time that works for you. They can help you. Even though they're um, with other instructors, that doesn't mean they can't help. They, they know the stuff they can help. And then, of course, my office hours. And of course, big group. So those are the kind of the main ways to get help. And then ask my instructor, honestly, for my stat lab, check that, um, check this tutorial playlist. And then if you don't see it there, then send it to you with ask my instructor. That's the cleanest way to get help on those. So, so another good question. Um, is there a way to check your overall grade and then how your grade is compared to your peers? And the answer is yes and no. So like most of my answers today. So your gradebook is in my StatLab grades right here. So if you click on MSL gradebook, it's showing you my StatLab gradebook, which will actually have your grades. Oh, I am failing this class because I've done no assignments. So I have a whopping 0%. But you can see the calculation. Um, I actually have the points distributed here as they are in the syllabus. So the final exam is worth 20%. That's why it's 200 points. The projects are worth 120 and so on. As a matter of fact, I actually have um, those points linked to in a schedule. I have two schedules linked to in the syllabus. One is by points, and it actually shows you all the points. There's a thousand points in the class total, and you can see that. Now, comparing yourself to others is a different question. And the answer is not through here. So not through my stat lab. You don't really see that. But when I send out um, paper pencil packet grades, which I do, I'll say, hey, everybody, I graded them all. What I send is, now let's see if you know this, the five number summary eh? from chapter three. So the minimum, the Q1, the median, the Q3, and the max. And in that way, you can see your measure of position. Hey, I was higher than Q3, great. Or I was between Q1 and the median, hmm, could do better next time, that kind of thing. So um, especially being below Q1, that would help you. So it helps you compare yourself to the group in that way. I do the same thing for exams also. So I will send out a, um, an email. Actually, I can kind of show you what it would look like. But it will have the five number summary. Oh, actually, it won't have it. Never mind. Sorry. Um, I, I don't have it available to me. But basically, I'll send you out the five number summary. Sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing. And it will tell you um, in that way where you are in relation to the group. But other than that, no. All right, so the question is, the paper pencil packet number one that is due, is it supposed to be a PDF with all the pages attached? Absolutely, for sure. So it's got to be a PDF. It has to be a PDF file. And it's one document. It'll have all the pages in it. And I recommend using your phone. <laughs> and um, Genius Scan is a nice app. Um, I think Office Lens, if you have your, your account with the JC all set up, with Microsoft, because there's we have a Microsoft or Microsoft Campus. So if you use Office Lens, it can actually automatically get put into your cloud account. I've had students make that work fine. Um, I personally use Genius Scan. 
I just like it. And I just take picture after picture after picture, page after page after page. The one thing I'm going to say is make sure that when you take that picture, it's just the page. Don't get me like the extra table bit. Because what happens is I print it and that extra table bit is in there. The printer won't, the printer will print the dark stuff and won't print the answers you have at the bottom of the page. So you want to have it really nice, good scans, scan, 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 and then upload into my style lab. And I can show you where you go into course tools. You go to document sharing right there, and then you're going to click on the packet or project that it is. So for paper, pencil, packet one, you're going to click on paper, pencil, packet one, and then you'll click upload right here. You just want to make sure you upload to me only, the instructor, and then you want, when you choose your file, make sure that your file name does not have a hashtag in it. I cannot tell you it. 150 times a semester people are be like texting me it won't let me upload it won't let me upload i've tried all day and i'm like is there a hashtag in it I'm like yeah i'm like there's your problem so do not put a hashtag do not put a pound sign a number sign in that file name and life will be golden just put your name in it put it like you know in my case tucky ppp1 upload and then it'll ask for like a little like note you just write me a note say like hey Alana. and there you go Oh, good. Perfect. Then you're fine, Brandy. Oh, sorry. I'm recording that answer. Hi, everybody. All right. I'm going to stop the recording right now. Another good question. What is the lowest passing grade for the course? So let me remind you one more time. You go to, hold on, main menu. There it is. So I would go to the info and links page. And then I'm going to click on the syllabus and schedule. And there's the syllabus. And let me pull that up just so you guys can see it. And oh, while I was there, see how I did this win 20 course points? That's another schedule, but it's going to have all the points listed out. So you can kind of get guess your grade in the class, which is nice. I mean, my style lab shows you your grade also, but this gives you kind of another way to, to get a sense of where you are. Because you can see, oh, there's 40 points for watching videos. Yes, there's 120 points. Oh, sorry, this is so zoomed out. Sorry. Let me zoom in just a second. So there's 20 points of, ooh, not that much. Jeez. 20 points for discussion board um, and so on and so on. So you can see there's 1,000 points in the class. 20, 200 points is the final. And that's what I made the my stat lab grade match in my stat lab. Now, the lowest grade to get a um, passing grade, hold on, i got to find this syllabus. Here it is. So, oops, I zoomed in too much. Now my syllabus doesn't like me. All right, so if I scroll down to that same table, you can see a 2.0 is passing. So the lowest grade um, to still pass the class is an overall average of 70%. Now, why am I talking about the points thing? Because that might not seem like your question, but it is. Because if there's a thousand points in the class, then you need 700 points total for the class. And you can see, well, the paper, pencil packets and exams alone are 700 points, right? They're worth the bulk of the, the points are. But there's also the two computer projects. Those are 120 points. And then all your my stat lab homework is 120 points and so on. So by doing more work here, you're building yourself a cushion for down here for the paper, pencil packets and exams, if that makes sense. So the bare minimum to pass is 700 points total. And you can see your points total when you're in your grade book. Um, again, mine shows zero because I haven't done anything. But when you're in here, if you click on show calculation, it can show you, hey, blah, 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 blah. Now, you might be thinking, wait, the homework's 160. Yes, that's because it includes the videos and the, um, the homework. So it's, it's joining together these videos, which are all your YouTube videos, as well as the homework there. So together they make 160 because they're all kind of counting for the same amount. So it's no big deal. And then there's your paper, pencil packets, your midterm exams, your projects, and your final. And then the discussion boards to make a total of 1,000 points. And you'll be able to see how many points you're at at any one point in the course. And you basically want to be at 70%. So your, your goal that you're shooting for, if you want to just pass, is 700 points total.